fun. Oh, you bet. Oh, Lordy. All right, all right. LDBC, this is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, guys, y'all sit with the coach for about seven minutes while I try to explain this madness of colors that you see on the screen. Um, Chris Cyborg came out with a statement recently, and she said, listen, the reason for the lack of talent in the 145-pound division in the UFC is because of the UFC. And shout out to Stone Mage. I can't believe I missed this story, but he made sure that I did not miss it, okay? Oh, and uh, let me respond to the person uh, so you don't think I'm being rude. Uh, somebody asked me to do another open mic poetry tonight, and I'm, I don't know because that's, that kind of stuff is not in high demand, so it'll, it'll have to be a request. A lot of people asking, then I would do it. Let's get to this video. Okay, so Chris Cyborg uh, basically came out and said that. I agree 50-50 with what Cyborg say. Okay, I agree that half of it is the UFC's fault. Half of it is. It's their fault. They're not getting and in making, you know, talent get into the UFC. It's not lucrative enough, okay? And in order for some of these women to want to come into the UFC and possibly have to fight Cyborg, the package that they give them, the contracts, they're going to have to be lucrative. And here's the second reason. Half of it is your fault, Cyborg. The reason why half of this is her fault, I'm going to explain, is that, again, the package is it's got to be lucrative because nobody's going to want to come in there for peanuts to take an ass whooping. I'm talking about literally, could you could be retired, you could be badly injured where you're out for six to eight months. Nobody wants to take that deal unless the money is going to be good because when you look at it, you, you'll be getting in there with Cyborg and then she'll go in there and totally destroy you you're out so now instead of fighting three to four times a year you can fight maybe roughly two times a year and to a fighter that uses this money that they make to help make ends meet that's that's not acceptable so a lot of these women they're not going to even if they get the call they're going to stay at bellator with El or, or invicta they may not take the damage that they would get in a fight with cyborg and they would be able to fight three to four times a year you know get their little income and build up their resume so then they can market themselves even higher, you know, so when the UFC calls again, they can be like, okay, I want this. And they can demand the kind of purses. See, right now, a lot of these women, they can't demand fights. They can't demand the money that they want. Okay, they just can't demand that kind of money. And these women now, they're, they're getting smarter. They're not going to get in there and just take any old kind of fight. And, and a lot of women, they're like, no, nah, I ain't getting in there. I mean, to fight Cyborg, nope, you got to come better than that. So Dana White and those guys to get some of these women in the UFC they're gonna have to come off the money okay they're gonna have to and that's just the way that is okay to the left of Cyborg is her resume and you can see all her most notable wins even a no contest I put that there because she actually won it but we all know the story uh, she got popped that year in 2011 and so they made it a no contest but Cyborg has since then served a suspension and she's done what she's supposed to do and she's been clean ever since so but these are notable wins on her resume. They're very, very notable. And these are, you know, some of the wins. The people who got in the octagon with her, you know. And she tko I mean, beat the hell out of all of them, okay. Um, when you look to the right of Cyborg, these are current featherweights in Bellator and Invicta, okay. And I think I, I repeated Amanda Bell twice, so excuse that. Um, the people in red, these are people who I believe will give Cyborg a tough fight I'm talking about not only a tough fight they'll go in there and they will fight to the very end and that and these are fighters too that I've noticed that when they get hit they don't panic see the fighters who Cyborg defeated when she hit them I'm talking about cracked them real good they panic Julia Budd I think Julia Budd let's start with her I think she would go in and give Cyborg a hell of a battle and I think that her grappling is good Julia Budd is a good grappler good wrestler and I think she would be able to go in and actually cause problems for cyborg and julia bud is a very big featherweight she's big she's very very strong okay julia bud is extremely strong and i know she's not going to crack under pressure when she gets hit okay gabrielle holloway this girl weighs a lot more than 145 pounds if you look at gabby in between fights gabby gabrielle holloway probably weigh i'll be willing to bet around 190 pounds like this girl maybe 180 she's got to cut a lot of weight but Gabby Holloway is big. She's durable, man. She's durable as hell. And that girl got a chin. Gabrielle Holloway has a chin. 
okay? And, and I can tell you what, that girl built like a tank. Cyborg would have her hands like, Cyborg would literally have to do, it'd have to be the war of attrition, okay? Cyborg would have to like literally get in there and beat on Gabriel Holloway until Gabriel Holloway can no longer move. Like that's the kind of fighter that Gabby Holloway is, okay? And I hope one day she gets that call. But that, I mean, I hope she does because that will be a hell of a fight. Even though Gabrielle Holloway has some losses, but see, styles make fights, okay? When you're in a stylistic matchup of a fight, just because, you know, Gabrielle Holloway loses somebody easily, that Cyborg would beat very easily. You see, that, that would be a decision loss. Cyborg would literally have to stop Gabrielle Holloway for her to stop coming. Okay, uh, the next one is Snead Kavanaugh. She's very tough. She's very, very tough. Oh, I'm sorry. Back to Gabrielle Holloway. Gabrielle Holloway don't have the skill sets. Her skill isn't there, but she's built like a tank, and that girl can take a beat. Uh, Sneed Kavanaugh, I think Sneed has a lot of good technical qualities, and she's never afraid to fight. And I think she would actually welcome an opportunity. See, me, I'm giving the UFC ideas, man. They need to be taking me up on this. The most talented, uh, the most talented out of everybody that I have boxed in red, between Invicta and Bellator is Ioni Rastafarian. I mean Rastafarian. Sorry, God dog it. She's very talented. She's extremely talented. This girl, her striking has improved. Okay, her technique, man, it's just it's good. And I think she would offer Chris Cyborg a very technical matchup, where Cyborg would have to make adjustments and learn how to do things like counterpunch. You know, learn how to use low leg kicks. Just rushing her, Ioni, it's not going to happen because. Ioni uh, Razafari is a, I can't, I'm messing up the name, so forgive me. This girl got power in both hands, okay? This girl got power in both hands, and I done seen this girl hit people, and they stop in their tracks, okay? This is not the person that you want to try to rush in on. That would be a good fight, okay? And finally, the last person in red that I have is the retired Latoya Walker. Latoya Walker, I was on her social media the other day, this girl is in phenomenal shape. She stay even though she's retired. This girl could go fight tomorrow. Like Latoya Walker was that girl. As a matter of fact, man, she is the one I've been saying for years. Okay, I said it two years ago that Latoya Walker would get into a slugfest with Cyborg. And Chris Cyborg, she's not very, she's not quick to take you down. She don't want to. Cyborg would rather just stand up and beat you. That's Cyborg's thing. Now, she gets you to the ground, she's going to hammer fist you to death. But Chris Cyborg really likes a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. That's what she liked. Latoya Walker, this that would have been fireworks, okay? Latoya Walker got a good chin. And I know somebody going to say, yeah, she was uh, TKO by Charmaine Tweet, somebody who Chris Cyborg destroyed. Look, she hit Latoya Walker with a spinning back fist. Latoya was staggered, but I felt like the referee didn't give Latoya time to recover. I don't feel like he did. That's just my opinion. I thought Latoya it, had she'd had time to recover because she was winning the fight. I mean, she was beating Charmaine Tweet easily, easily to the punch. I think that'll be a hell of a fight, and I think Latoya Walker would give Cyborg a formidable challenge. And this fight would go to distance. I think Latoya and Gabrielle and Ioni, they have the tools to go to distance with Cyborg, maybe in a three ring in a three round fight. And I think Julia Bud can make it three rounds. But, man, the UFC, they're going to have to come up off the money, man, and get some of these girls up into that. They're going to have to. Or it's just we're going to be talking about this a year from now. Oh, who's going to fight Cyborg? You guys give me your thoughts. This is your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. I'm done. What are you guys waiting on? Subscribe to the best women's MMA platform on YouTube.